This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. It is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, as the trains roll by here and the taco stand is smelling awesome. Of course, this is the show where we talk with people in and around indie, independent professional wrestling or just pro wrestling in general. And uh, we have a lot of fun here and get to know some of the people in the area, outside of the area, and uh, just people that like wrestling. Uh, so you can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, uh, including uh, recent past shenanigans uh, and other <laughs> things going on, including the past interviews for the 190-plus episodes of this that we have been doing. Uh, you can drop us a line to, at GoodTimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or at 412-206-WMS0. If you have any questions, comments, or if you have anybody you think you'd like us to uh, chat with in the near future, let us know there. And, of course, thank you to our Patreon supporters at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem show that are helping keep the lights on here in this fancy new studio that we have so uh this is somebody i've wanted to talk to uh for a while on here and we've had uh we've had one portion of the neon blondes uh on this show and previous iterations of this show before but with us this week is danny mo joining us in hey. studio hello How are you? hello <laughs> now, hey. now now like i say you're part of the uh, you and Facade are, are the neon blondes, right? Yep, that we are. So I felt I felt like it was only appropriate. We have some fun here. If if, if I can be an honorary member of the neon blondes uh, for the for the evening, I think for today, especially since I'm missing my man, <laughs> so you can join in. There you go. So <laughs> while Facade is in is in India, I almost got my countries mixed up. It's India now, right? India, India. yeah, he, he's in India. According to Facebook. According to Facebook, Facebook apparently. There you go. There you go. Somebody, somebody just stopped and looked at me as I was putting the hair on uh, outside <laughs> Little the window. Kid. As my wife comes in and says, "What is happening here?" <laughs> no, this isn't like the STD Christmas special. I'm part of the Neon Blondes right now, uh, honorarily for this interview. So, uh, and she walks <laughs> yeah. away. Uh, but anyways, oh, there's kids outside and everything. It's a perfect time for this. <laughs> but anyways, how, how you doing, Danny? Good. I'm doing good. So, um, uh, so, uh, uh, so people that know you as, you know, managing facade, Mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, I think, right? Yes, I think, I believe that's the best way to describe it. Just always with him. I used to just hang out behind the (laughs) merchandise. (laughs) Then I moved my way up right there with him. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting distracted by my nose getting tickled by this thing. This is the it goes on audio. It is the Enzo hair that's usually um floating around the wrestling mayhem show uh a it bit. Looks fun. But anyways, uh so I like to get uh start with a little get to know you question um uh for the people on the show. So okay. what is your earliest memory of professional wrestling? Honestly, I got in trouble in track in college. And I oh, went back to my room, and I had a bunch of homework to do, and obviously we had cable, we had a house and stuff, and I just turned the TV on, and wrestling was legit on in the background as I was doing my homework, and I was just like, oh, why did I do that to get in trouble? So that like was probably the first time I remembered like seeing wrestling interesting and it was just kind of something that was on right yeah i don't know who was on mm-hmm. what obviously i didn't even realize there was storylines or anything like that but wrestling was on my tv mm-hmm. the day i got in trouble with track <laughs> and i went back to my room like oh. so it wasn't necessarily that you <laughs> latched on to it it was just hell it, it just had an early presence in your life yeah so that was like 2010 2010 mm-hmm so so from that like how did you actually kind of get into liking pro wrestling michael (laughs) facade Uh, facade sorry 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 facade um i had no idea especially indie wrestling i i didn't even know this was a thing Mm -hmm. i had no idea i thought there was just wwe that was it 
I didn't know about any of the other companies. The stuff, the stuff that comes on when you're in trouble at track. Yes. <laughs> That's all I thought there was. Mm-hmm. And then I stalked this boy at the gym <laughs> for like a year. Uh, Which is very appropriate. Knowing the pictures <laughs> that I always see of just like you guys at the gym like all the time. Uh, you know, it's like, okay, that makes sense. Yes. I had like my mom involved, my sister, her friends, my coworkers. The people that worked at the gym, I had everybody involved because I tried to get every little piece of information I could to, like, figure out who he was, if he was even available. Mm -hmm. He wasn't at first, so then I kept asking and kept asking. I I like this because it's a whole different angle. Because usually (laughs) people are like, oh, I discovered him when I was 13 years old. Oh, I I was like five on grandpa's knee, you know. But you're just like, I I, I met a boy. And so, so... when you found out he was a pro wrestler, what were your initial thoughts? What is life? <laughs> like, what do you do? What do you, how do you even, how are, I don't know. Do you have a real plan? Is that the- <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, is this just for fun? Like, yeah. what's, your, what's like, what's your real job? Mm-hmm. Like, that was like my question, but this is the real job. Mm-hmm. This is, you can make a living with it. Yeah. Crazy. It's a super crazy living. I've never even thought I would ever be involved in anything like this. Because I've been like, work, 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 like, behind the desk, mm. boring, boring, boring. I never thought you could, like, have legit fun at a job. <laughs> and now you can. Now That's I know awesome. you can. <laughs> so so you, you mentioned about how you were just kind of the girl at the booth, you know, for a while. Mm-hmm. So how did that transition? Like, like at what point did, were you like, oh, hey, there's something to this? and Or maybe I want to get out there? It was never me asking. Mm-hmm. I never asked. It was actually a company that asked me, and I refused for the longest time. I was like, Mm-mm. nope, nope, not doing it. I was never the cheerleader type. Mm-hmm. I was never the one to be, like, center of attention in the crowd. I was like... I would be in teams and things like that. Like I was in drumline. I was a pole vaulter. Like that was off to the side. That wasn't like mainstream track. Like people weren't all watching that. And I bowled. It's like my stuff was all like chill, like nothing like super like a cheerleader. And I, being a manager, I kind of pull that into like I am his cheerleader. So the first time I did it, I totally messed up. It's so embarrassing, but at least I messed up early and figured it out how to not like. Can we can we say like like who you debuted with? Did somebody's asking in the chat room? Um, Shane Strickland. Okay. I believe it was at VW. Okay. I believe it was him versus Shane Strickland. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was him. It was like an extra long match. Is that five more minutes match? <laughs> so, so not only did you 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 debut out there uh, in this promotion, but also like you had to be out there a while. Yes. Well, no, I came from the crowd. Oh, okay. I was so scared. Oh, that's right. I remember I was that now. So I remember scared. clips of that now. Like my hair was a mess. I'm like, what? What was I thinking? I was wearing. I was. It was actually Michael's cutoff. It was his neon ninja mm-hmm. cutoff shirt. I was so scared. It's actually the first picture I believe we have with me on his shoulder holding his belt. That's our Miss Elizabeth Perry. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you grow into that role? Like, did they, did you know, did Facade give you any kind of like pointers and kind of a, a mini training for what to deal with out there and how things work? Or, or how did you kind of grow into that? He is kind of, I was so scared. I won't lie. I took a shot the first time I ever did it. <laughs> I was like, I need to just, and the shot didn't do anything, but like mentally mm-hmm. it did, just because. Mm-hmm. Something to help you out. Yeah, just to help me out. But from that point, I didn't ever need it. He just said, be confident and focus on me, which was him, focusing on him and like reacting to what was actually happening. Mm-hmm. So me actually reacting was making it more realistic, and it is realistic. Like you see me out there, I'm legit freaking out or super excited <laughs> it helps having somebody with a, a relationship in there too that and and facade does some crazy stuff very scary sometimes but i have high confidence in him and his in-ring work mm-hmm. super super high confidence and now with him in india he like 
literally you look outside of his bedroom and there's two rings right there. So I know he's getting in and out there to perfect his art. <laughs> So talk a little bit about the experience. You, you, you talked about how, you know, I, and I know, you know, following you guys uh, and your social media and everything, trying to keep up, trying to keep up, mind you. Uh, you guys are everywhere. I, you're, uh, uh, I heard you were down at uh, Joey Janela's spring, uh, spring break and WrestleMania that was weekend crazy. last that year. That was so fun. Things that was like so much that. fun. Uh, uh, some involvement in Evolve uh, mm-hmm. and just like all over the country, it seems. Well, it at first it was just kind of, Local, like close to three, four hours. So, and, the, and the cops are coming. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Um, Don't worry. But, Nothing to see here. <laughs> but then we started going. We went the farthest I was going with him was like Tennessee, and then Jason Kincaid had messaged him, him and Chris Hero. They got us up to Canada for the first time, mm-hmm. and that was our longest trip together and that was for when Chris here did that the, like the longest wrestling I forget how many hours he did but just guys kept rotating oh, oh, in. oh that and like hour match he did no or, it was like couple, hours like couple hour match yeah yeah, yeah. and was, he just like had a towel he didn't even finish a whole gallon of water the whole time doing it it was insane it was, a lot, it was definitely a lot of fun that was a good weekend but that started us in Canada and then we started going back like every month sometimes twice a month depending um and then we drove down to florida and then we just i don't know people just started messaging him and next thing we know he's going to russia <laughs> and then singapore malaysia so he he definitely got to go a lot of crazy countries like the one weekend or actually it was one month it was a different country every week it was like USA, Canada, Singapore, I believe, and then went straight to Mexico Jeez. with Gory. <laughs> Jeez, uh, yeah, and, and I know Gory's been doing real well in Mexico. Of course, Shima as well. That, that whole crew. Mm-hmm. I, I love. I love to see this. This crew has been like, uh, you know, trained around the same time, and you know, and have become world travelers. Mm-hmm. You know, and of course, Shima on TV with Impact Wrestling and everything too. Um, and, uh, it, it's, it's been really cool to see that kind of crew get out there. Like our Pittsburgh guys. Yeah. And I got to go whenever I went to Russia with, uh, like Michael, uh, Shima was there too. Like, uh, DJZ, however you want to call him. I call him Shima. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Yeah. He's always going to be Shima to, to, to most of us (laughs) are in the area. Um, and I always think it's funny because she, I always say Shima has like the, uh, like He's got like a wrestler exchange program because like he'd come back with a couple of Russians. To, he always, yeah, that's shows. how we got to Russia the first time, like through him because they ended up, we ended up like driving them because they were at a hotel and Michael and I just drove in places, took them to shows. If Shima's on the show and there's somebody showing up that's probably from a different country or is a lucha wrestler from America, he probably came with Shima. Exactly. Like you can kind of see the formula. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she brings some awesome people around. That's awesome. Um, so, you know, obviously you, you're, you're getting to, you I, I've seen you getting physical a few times in there. A couple of times. A couple I got times. to. Yes. I got to do it. Um, do. But I know you're not doing much of it and, and there's a reason for that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I read your story, you know, when you, when you post on Facebook about it and, uh, um, and, and of course there was a, a fundraiser recently for, some surgery that you had mm-hmm. uh can you tell us a little bit about that issue so i got dropped on concrete my face <laughs> uh nothing else got hurt except for my knuckles mm-hmm. uh but that's why i have like all these scar tissues on my nose and everything um i actually bit halfway through my tongue the inside of like my lip was all ground meat and they like Ugh. stitched all back up i ended up losing one full tooth i tried to keep it they will not let me keep them like it's my tooth why can't I keep my teeth? They're like, nope, we need to keep them. I had the same argument. About like, my, I had the same well, argument mine. about my tonsils. So, yeah. <laughs> we picked it up off the ground. Like, <laughs> it's my tooth. I didn't even have to it's give like, it to it's you. Like, it's like McFoley's ear, right? It's like, why can't I keep that? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. And then, like, the rest of my teeth are all, like, this all through my mouth. So, I had braces in, like, ninth grade. Mm-hmm. And then I had braces again. Uh, June. I think it was junior year of college, so it was 2010 is when this happened, April 2010. And so we went to the hospital, had that, 
I wasn't, I couldn't eat. My mom made me, like, this is the only real memory I have from, like, the food I was eating. I know it was just liquids. But she made me stir fry. And she blended it. And I ate it through, like, a syringe. <laughs> it was, I don't remember the taste. I don't remember anything. But I do know my mom made stir fry. And I ate it. Liquid. Liquid <laughs> stir fry. I don't, I do not recommend it. But from there, um... I had a flipper, just a single tooth flipper after those braces came off. And that's just what I, like, I wore it. I do, like, little party tricks and pop it out every now and again, like, in the middle of conversation. And it would, like, freak people out. So that when would, you're bored of the conversation, you <laughs> go, bloop. Just drop it. Yeah. And people would be like, what? What just happened? And, uh, but then I, my teeth started, like, dying and I just kept getting root canal after root canal and I'm like oh this is so annoying and then the color started changing so I'm like this mm. and that was right when I like met Michael and I started being in like the public eye more than I ever was before and I'm like this is I don't know about this I was getting a little self-conscious about it mm -hmm. so I got a new dentist uh, that my dad was going to and he was like we can do a crown I was like, okay. Like, he was ready to go. Like, instantly. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the blonde hair. I a serious story, face. and I'm, like, trying to get, <laughs> keep this fake hair out of my nose. I kind of like it, though. It's just, like, <laughs> fancy. fancy. It reminds me of my old long hair a little bit. I think so. you should grow it back. Oh. We tried that a year ago. <laughs> She's like, no. no. Wife's looking at me. Please don't. <laughs> she misses it. Anyways. Um. So, I saw this dentist, and... Actually, it happened. We ended up doing it right when Pro Wrestlers vs. Zombies, was, the premiere was happening. <laughs> I'm sorry. I remember watching that. Because I went to the premiere and I had like super white teeth, but they weren't even teeth. It was just a mold because he had ground down on my teeth that I had left mm -hmm. so that the crown could like get cemented in there. So it was just a... Uh, molding i don't like he molded the teeth and that's what i had at that premiere um and then a week later he cemented the teeth in and it was great at first so when you were talking like you kind of made a comment about how uh you were like literally worried your teeth were going to fall out during like if you did more than what you do now right um my teeth did fall out before <laughs> really in canada i it was it was Facade versus, I'm so mad I just forgot his name. Stu Grayson. Okay. Stu. It was the best match ever. Like, it was, it was really, it was a really, really good match. And going there, I was like, my teeth do not feel right. Like, we were there for a whole weekend and I wasn't eating because I was afraid. It was just kind of like mm -hmm. real loose on me. So, I'm like, whatever. I'm like, I'm, I can't do too much today. Like out there, I'm going to like still cheer you on and everything, but I really don't want any, I'm, I'm hoping I don't have to get involved with anything. And so the match ends, we all go in the back and I went to like tell them how amazing the match was and they fell and I just grabbed my mouth. I just started crying. I went, I found Michael and I'm like, we got, we got to go. Mm -hmm. Like right now, I was like, you, I don't care about merch. Like go pack the merch up. We are leaving like this second, like probably going home in our gear. So he's like, what? And I'm like, and I like moved my hand. I'm like, they're not in. They're just like floating around. I was holding it up with my tongue. Mm -hmm. It was like the scariest thing ever. It was like embarrassing and scary at the same time. Uh, so we stopped. But, but thankfully did not have it in the match. No, but it was literally seconds after we mm -hmm. got into the back. I'm like, thank the Lord that it happened back here, not when I was out there. But we went to some, like, like a Rite Aid style kind of thing in Canada. Michael got me. We can just call it Canadian uh, Rite Aid. Canadian Rite Aid? We <laughs> yeah. went to a Canadian Rite Aid. And Michael got me some denture cream and some biotin mouthwash. And I swished my mouth out with the biotin 
and then put denture cream <laughs> on my bridge. Because at this point, like I said, I wasn't eating all weekend. Yeah. And I was starving. And I was just like mentally gone. So put them in with the dent, like the denture cream. <laughs> so I carry denture cream with me everywhere. Like from that point on, you will always find denture cream in my backpack. <laughs> um, put them in. Hey, hey, you know, if you're going to share share something with Jerry Lawler, I mean. <laughs> oh, that's our connection. Well, okay. you, got, you, got, you got something to relate to uh, when you're on the Legend shows now. Okay. <laughs> I'll <laughs> right? take it. Any kind of connection can start any kind of story. Exactly, exactly. Say, listen, honky tonk, how do you deal with the situation? Because I know, no way those pearly whites are <laughs> still no, going. These aren't real either. Oh, one little thing I forgot. I put my, I had to put his bandana on. That's how I walked out. And that's how I, we drove to the Canadian Rite Aid. I had his like, it was like, I think I have a picture. I'll have to find it and send it to you for this. And uh, I just had that on. And then we ended up getting pizza, and I slowly ate pizza. I pretty much probably just swallowed it. I don't think I even really chewed it. <laughs> and that was an eight-hour drive home. Jeez. And the whole time, this is when we had, I don't know what phone service, but there was no, we had no service. So I was unable to get a hold of my mom. I had to be at work at 5 a.m., which I was not going to. I had to get a hold of my dentist to like get these cemented back in. Mm -hmm. So the second we hit the border, I'm blowing my mom up. I'm like, call work. I was like, here's their, here's all of my manager's numbers. Call them, tell them I cannot come in. My teeth fell out. Please call the dentist. Call the dentist. Please call the dentist and like tell them I need to be in there. So they got me in the dentist at like 6 a.m. the next morning and he cemented it back in. But it was like, and then they stayed in for a while. That was that was the worst thing in the entire world. So that, that felt at that point I felt stuck. I'm like, I'm stuck. There's nothing I can do. It's so expensive to go next step to like mm -hmm. do the implants. So I felt stuck there, and I felt stuck living in the area we are because that was the only dentist that I could go to. Like that, I could call him and he'd be there. Mm -hmm. And we later found out my teeth were decaying. So the cement was never going to work. So I'm like, oh. It's basically you cement it and then it would decay and like lose the grip because yeah. it's, it's just it's just gone. So like from all the trauma and everything mm -hmm. from like the hit and also he said it could possibly because I've had asthma my whole life. Mm -hmm. And inhalers, it's medicine going in your mouth. You're not told or you weren't told back then to wash your mouth out every time you took it. So all that medicine is just sitting on your teeth. Oh. So he said a lot of asthma patients that had asthma as kids now are coming out, teeth are decaying from the inside. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, I guess I, guess I have to like do something about this. And then our one friend Janice had messaged me saying, that a girl I actually went to high school with worked at a maxi facial surgeon, and uh, I should go meet up with him. And I'm like, uh, I'm gonna search around first. Like, staying like locally, it's really, really expensive. Mm -hmm. So I searched around, and um, one of our friends over from Remix, his mom works at a dentist, and I went there, and they were awesome, and they. Told my the only reason they were staying in at this point, like this is like two years down the line now, was because I had another root canal and that plug was holding my teeth in. So when he he came and like well, I went there and he cut cut my teeth off <laughs> and then made another molding and they were just in with temporary posts until I figured out what I was gonna do. Mm -hmm. And then it was probably about another six, seven months. And then I finally went and saw this doctor um, that our friend Janice told us about. And we scheduled it. My mom, I, I actually skipped out on doing a travel with Shima and Michael down to Tennessee because I made an appointment for like super early the next morning. There's no way I would make it back. Yeah. And. I'm glad I didn't and, go. And knowing Shima's traveling uh, issues, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, if you don't, if you guys don't know, if you haven't watched Fake Fights and Miss Flights, 
And I think his uh, was, it, was it was it on there he was telling or, or one of our shows where he booked something to go to like to Pittsburgh to Tennessee. But when he booked it, he didn't realize like like it made sense in flights, but it didn't make sense in driving. Because it was, uh, yeah, he was with Facade. I remember that. Because it turned out to be nine hours to get to the venue. And they thought it was like five. Because it was five from Chicago. But they were coming from Pittsburgh They were coming from before. IWC. They left yeah, from IWC. Yeah, yeah. So it was like this insane thing. And they were like running their ass off trying to get it like a nine hour uh, drive down. And like, you know, they left too late, basically. Because they, they expected Because we five. all went and got food. Yep. And then they left and I went home. And... Yeah, because Michael drove with him because I was going to drive and I was going to ride back with Shima because Michael had to fly to Detroit Mm -hmm. for something. And I fell through for me, so Shima had to drive back by himself. I felt a little bit bad. I was like, could have been that could have been a crazy time. I don't Mm -hmm. even I don't even know what could have happened. Awesome. So you had it. You you had a a, a, it was a GoFundMe or something online. I did a GoFundMe. It didn't really work. And so I haven't really posted about it at all. It's. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a lost cause. People definitely helped me out a little bit with like my yeah, I, I was basic, saying, like figuring out how to get to the doctor I'm at now. Yeah. They help pay for, like it helped pay for all those appointments and the little things that the Dr. Mason in, uh, in Ohio, or actually it's Parkersburg, West Virginia is where it was. Um, he, like things, they help pay for that. Like with my, the temporary posts before I, I have these now. <laughs> <laughs> but it definitely there was a there was a great outpouring from the fans on there that I was seeing like around your posts on social media and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh so oh, that's not you. Um so it was it was really cool to see that uh, uh going on too. So. It it was good and I appreciate anybody that helped me. Like mm-hmm. it definitely like kicks my butt to be like, I just need to do it. And then when Michael got the call from the great Kali, I was like <laughs> Wait, well, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna and we're gonna go over this when he gets back into the states and I have a chance to talk about. Did he legit get a call from the great Kali himself? Yes, Holy we were shit. meeting. <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> we were meeting. Was to, there a lot of what? Is there? It was a lot of. I think this is a prank call. I'm gonna let him tell that story because he tells it way oh, better. Oh, of course. But, but there's a little preview for down the line, and I hope Riz is listening to this one because he's the biggest great Kali fan. We I had want, to see the set. We had to wait. Because he was on the phone with him. Like, we were driving. I was working. He was working. And we were meeting to go to the movies mm-hmm. after work. And as he's driving, he's on the phone. I'm like, come on. Like, the movie starts in, like, five minutes. Let's go. Let's go. He's like, I'm like, oh, my goodness. This this can't be that important. I was like, if it's your mom or your sister or anybody, like, just tell him we'll call him back. The movie's about to start. He's like, stop. I'm like, fine. So he gets out of the car and he's like, just like shocked. It's like, I need to download an app and we need to go inside. I'm like, okay. So he sat in the massage chairs while he talked to the great Collie for like an hour. And then we went and saw a movie. I forget what the movie was because it was, I don't even know. It's probably not, one of the super not, movies. Not, not as amazing as a, a, a our conversation with the great Collie. <gasps> Uh, oh. but then we'll, we'll, we'll get details on that here at a later date. So, so, so you went from not really being in the wrestling thing, kind of question this to now being a part of it. Are you, are you more of a watcher now? Are you into it more? I mean, as a whole now, as a whole, yes. Like mm. I think about everything from like, how can I make myself better prior to getting the final surgery done? Cause I've only had the bone graft. So I still need to get the implants um, to how can I watch to learn what to do, what not to do. Should I watch old stuff or should I just stay with the new stuff? Because everything's evolving so quickly now. It's not it's not what it was. Um, and should I watch? I don't personally like watching matches that I'm in because I, I judge myself so much. I'm like, oh, I should have done that. Oh, I look so mm-hmm. weird and things like that. But I watch... If I'm home, I'm watching Raw, SmackDown, NXT, the pay-per-views. I'm like, nope, sorry, can't decorate. I'm watching the pay-per-view. Mm. I'm going to stay up late. Like, I'm watching wrestling. And I'm trying to go to some shows as much as I can when, while he's gone. But all of our shows are so far away that driving four and a half hours to, like, watch a show that 
we were on is it's a little hard by yourself. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not going to be on it and have to be at work super early, <laughs> but I don't know. I am definitely way more into it. Things are looking bright for the future. And I'm excited to get these surgeries done. I just have one more. Hopefully it's in March, and then I'll have real teeth in September. So happy birthday to me. <laughs> but up to that, like, I, I haven't really stepped foot in the ring. I want to, but I want this to heal. I don't want to mm-hmm. do something to mess it up and, like, make the process even longer because it's already been so long. But back to, like, right when he got that phone call, I was like, that's it. You're gone for six months. I'm doing this surgery. I'm doing it. So literally he left on August 16th and I got my surgery exactly a week later, like to the day, Wednesday and a Wednesday. So when he comes back, you'll be ready to go more or less. When he gets back, it's going to, the second surgery is just happening. So I only, cause we thought it was only going to be six months, but Mm -hmm. I didn't know I didn't have any bone. Mm -hmm. So they had to do a bone graft. So it added six additional months, but Whatever, the process has started. There's no going back now. I got these fake white teeth right now. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's still, they, they suffice. I just can't eat with them. So if you ever see me out in a restaurant and I'm like being a little weird to you, it's because I don't got my teeth in. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. My dad does that to me all the time now. Uh, <laughs> um, what is the uh, best and worst thing about uh, being around indie wrestling for you so far? The best and the worst? Best is getting to be with Michael all the time because most people don't even get to be with their significant other nearly as much as we have been. So, like, this whole India thing was is a shock because we were, like, we lived together. We traveled together. We worked together, like, always together. Um, so, I guess best and worst could be that you get to travel together and you get separated a lot. But at this point now, I know we'll be able to handle it if – in the future, like anything happens and he has to go one way, I have to go another, or we get to travel together, mm-hmm. we'll be okay. We'll be good. That's awesome. So the, the worst is definitely the distance, but now we got Facebook Messenger, Snapchat. So you're always connected as long as India doesn't turn off their data. <laughs> that happened for a week and I was like oh, freaking out. I'm like, oh my gosh. But I could still call him. I called. I finally yeah. called, which that was like a fifty dollar phone call. But I got to actually talk to him and he's like, they turned the data off. Yeah. Like, it, it was something is off. there was something weird with one of the providers, so they just shut it off. Like I think they were like what? it was like something along something? some scandal thing was going on and the yeah. guy that like owns the data was like in protest, shut it off. So if uh, <laughs> if you're you're not concerned about that uh, net neutrality idea here in America, you we could be India. So <laughs> just call your local Congress. Creator. But they have pretty sweet like data. Like everybody's given a gig a day. Oh, I blew through that. <laughs> but they but still through, that's they awesome. Through it. That's good. That's good. But a gig a day for free. Yeah, that's great. That's a lot. It's awesome. Oh, I, and also, it's such a big thing. And private infrastructure, like lined internet, is probably is turning into awesome cast. I apologize, uh, but but uh, you know exactly right. Uh, but anyways, back to wrestling. Hi, back to wrestling. Uh, <laughs> back to wrestling. <laughs> Where can people find you online? Um, uh, you. Can, I actually finally changed all my stuff because I had like four different things for every different social media. Mm-hmm. So now I'm all at Zebrap. Z e b r a a a p. And my Snapchat is zebrap88. Why zebrap? Uh, so I used to work at kids? a kid's summer camp. It was called Camp Motorsport. <laughs> and I was it's a- not the zoo bass. She's wearing the zoo bass, Zubass. of course, because as as they do. <laughs> Always couldn't wear anything else. Literally, I wear zoo bass every single day. I have enough to go it's, a whole month and not have to wash any. It still cracks me up to see a hentai come out in zoo bass. Hey, I, like <laughs> I don't. I don't hate it. I don't angry hate it. mask guy. Zubaz. It's great. Mean, funny. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but Zebrat means um, I was teaching a spy camp and we had to make code names. <laughs> and the code names were two things that you love. And mine was zebras 
and I love dirt biking. So the Z is the zebra, and the brap is the dirt bike. So like brap, <laughs> like brap brap. <laughs> so zebra. That's, That's how awesome. I came about. And the only person that calls me zebra is Shima. He's the only one that like legit. He's like zebra. It's not Danny. It's not yeah, Danny, that's, nothing. That, that it's, seems like Shima. Yeah, it's just zebra. <laughs> so I appreciate it because like my other one was uh, Danny Mo, and my Facebook used to be H Banger, which stood stood for Headbanger. Because <laughs> I was like into heavy metal and. Headbanger was my nickname. Nice. And then I turned into a headbanger into cement. <laughs> so it all made sense. Everything everything does make sense in the end. Man, it you really know, does. I don't know if you thought about this, but like when you get to the point where you you know get into the wrestling stuff, like the like share her face was smashed on concrete. What do you think she's gonna do to you? <laughs> you know. Like I the, can handle anything. Exactly. I'm gonna exactly. handle it. Like, I'll be like able the, to just handle. the announcers being able to drop that fact in the middle of a women's match is gonna be amazing. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited to have my own match. Like once this is done and I continue my training, like I'm stoked. Dream match. Uh, what would your dream first mm. match be? Dream first match. I really want. I feel like I really want to work. Mephisto. I think that'd be it'd be fun. I, I, I she's been uh, all over IWC this year, and it's it's the first I've seen her in person. Amazing. She's an intimidating. Yes. Like for being like literally half my size, she's I still wouldn't. Yeah. She works. She's such <laughs> she's a hard great. worker, and like she's so she's dedicated. Great. She's awesome. So I would I would love to definitely work her. Um. I don't know. I work any of the girls. I would. I think because everybody's kind of a different style, and I'm excited to see how I build my style from what I do just now. <laughs> I, I, I'm messing with, with my hair, hair here. It's, like, it's been a while. Uh, me. I don't know. Excuse I'm excited me. to see where where me being in the ring more takes me from mm. what I am now, being part of the Neon Blondes as a pair rather than – Danny Mel on her own. You never know. Maybe a faction. Uh, <laughs> you can start a faction. Uh, by the way, Ken says hi. Uh, he says that he bought a can of Surge from you. Thumbs up. Hi, Ken. Thanks. <laughs> I hope and you still have it. <laughs> it's just on the shelf. Uh, I remember when you guys were selling Surge. It's like I, That was like the weirdest, best thing ever because yeah, i think and it made sense he right. loves surge like and he surge, overdoses on surge. surge wasn't widely available again and you guys like figured out a place to get it from and just went for it right yeah merchandise it, it worked their merchandise area for the for uh these two like just looks like they brought walmart with them like i, I don't know what but show in the I was best in. way in the best way like they're in, in a the, match I in the neon best way yeah i hadn't seen you guys for a while and i'm just like did they get racks from walmart you know, to <laughs> you got every kind. We got hoodies, we got jackets, we got I think and every I neon one color you me. want. Yes, any color. We got sweatshirts. The yes. hoodies. We don't sell the hoodies. Um, explain yeah. explain your your, your sweater oh. uh, to to the people on audio or even people seeing video that maybe can't this make that out. Facade and I, mm -hmm. as the Grinch and Cindy, um, Pencilero drew us. Has the dreads. Has his bandana on it right there. Even has his kick pads and his tights, jacket, even even down to the detail of his cape. And then I don't have a nose ring anymore, but it, you can't really see, but she even has a little nose ring. So when I had a nose ring, so this is us. This is our Christmas shirt. There you go. Some of the, <laughs> the best merchandisers in indie wrestling that I know. So thanks so much for joining us and uh, telling your story. And, uh, and hopefully a year or so from now, we'll see you in the ring. Hopefully. If Thanks you guys, for having me. Check her out. Follow her on the social media. And, of course, uh, you can check out everything going on uh, over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or IndieWrestling.us. You can see uh, uh, see her ringside with facade. Uh, uh, just look them up on uh, IndieWrestling.us on several of the shows over there. 
And, uh, and of course, again, uh, check us out and, and let us know anybody you'd like to see on the show. If you have somebody uh, you see on the events page for Indie, Indie Wrestling.us or Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook, uh, where we do live streams of these interviews, uh, you can drop a line to Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show.com, 412 4 206 <laughs> WMS0. The blonde hair is going to my head, apparently. Um, it's all the chemicals because this, this hair is everywhere. It's like the hair version of stripper glitter. It's everywhere in the studio. Uh, but anyways, uh, check out everything. And until then, please support the U.S. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.